HL7 Soup is proud to introduce HL7 Soup version 3. So what's new? Well, lots of things. First, you can improve your testing with automatic sending. You can also receive from a directory scan as well as from TCP. You can now create workflows that run off your inbound messages. And you can create activities for those workflows with Microsoft.NET. Let's go ahead, load it up and show you. Things are looking familiar here, but there's a subtle difference. The send and receive buttons have had an overhaul to make it much easier to edit or remove your settings. Plus, we have the new play button that automatically sends your messages one after the other. But how? Well, let's take a look at the configuration of the sender to find out. Okay, things are looking pretty new now, but don't worry. This is very similar. We still default all the settings so you can get up and running right away. But there's more available now. Firstly, you don't need to add your sender's name anymore. You still can, but if you leave them blank, we'll automatically name them for you. You can also decide where the messages come from. They traditionally come from HL7 Soup's current tab, and still can, but now you can point to a directory and use the files from here too. The play button starts the automatic sending of messages, and here you can configure how it plays. Set a delay to zero and it sends as fast as possible. Or you can add a delay so we don't DOS a busy live receiver. This will now send a message every three seconds. So now we've looked at senders, let's head over to the receivers. Receivers in version 3 can either receive via TCP or by monitoring a directory and waiting for a file to be dropped in that contains messages. But what to do when a message is received? Earlier versions of HL7 Soup could just load and display it, but watch what happens when we click here. In drops an activity to follow the receiver. Click again, here's another. We can build a workflow that runs for each received message. But before I get ahead of myself, let's give you an overview of our receiver configuration screen. Here, as you might have guessed, is the workflow view panel. It helps you navigate your workflow with ease. Click any activity and you jump straight to viewing its details. You can even jump directly into activities filters or transformers by clicking the buttons here. We'll explain more about these shortly. Notice that you can also adjust the order of your activities with a simple drag and drop. Easy. The central section is the activities detail panel. Here you can configure the properties of the receiver or its activities. It's also the place to adjust what your activities do. It was going to send it to another TCP address, but now the message will be written to a file. It's worth pointing out that activities you have custom written in .NET also show here. Plus, the HL7 Soup team will keep building on this list in time. On the right, we have the message logs. Here, you can search for and look at the messages that have been received by this workflow. We'll come back here shortly, and I'll show you more once I have sent a message. Across the top, here are the Windows controls. From right to left, we firstly have a link for help, and then forward and back navigator buttons so I can traverse the workflow screens easier. Then the close window button, the save and close, save and export. It's worth noting that this window is no longer modal, so you can click back and forwards between the main HL7 Soup windows without needing to lose your place while you're designing your workflow pattern. Also, if you save a running workflow, it will automatically and instantly swap to the new version without missing a beat. So let's quickly create a real workflow. I'll make a pattern that receives an HL7 message, then extract the patient details and write them to a CSV file that can be loaded into Excel for future analysis. Firstly, I navigate to my receiving activity, and I'm going to select it will come from TCP, which is the HL7 standard. I'm happy to take the default server settings and accept this message into port 22222. The message type will be HL7, but we could also accept XML or CSV. I don't need the inbound message to be loaded into HL7 Soup's main screen, so I'll uncheck here. And I want the response message to be handled for me after all the activities have been processed. Finally, I'm going to place this message template here. 
This is a message that looks like what most of my inbound messages will be. It will help me later, and I'll show you how soon. Before that though, let's skim figure how we'll write the CSV file out. I'll navigate to this activity, and we will change it to a file writer. Now I just have to give it a file location, say C temp patient CSV, and we will set that message type to CSV. Once again, I'm going to put in the message template. I could just bind this in from another activity like so. But as we're creating a new message, I will just type in my CSV messages structure. I want it to show the patient's ID, first name, last name, and date of the message. So I type them in here. Now comes the fun part. We're going to map the values of the inbound HR7 message to the CSV message. And we do that with transformers. Let's click here to edit them. Transformers are an incredibly powerful feature with capabilities well beyond the scope of this video. But if you click the link in the comments, you can watch our Transformers video that goes into much greater depth. For now though, notice we have a source tree and a destination tree that are generated from the message templates we place into the activity. You can edit those message templates here too, and the changes automatically reflect back in the activity properties. The general goal of transformers is to take values from the source tree and map them into values in the destination tree. The mappings will show here and their details show here. For example, we find the patient's family name in the PID 5.1 and we drag it across into the last name field of our destination tree. We've now created a mapping between the messages that joins the messages together. Let's do the same thing for the patient's first name and their ID. Great. For the date of the message, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to use a variable directly in the destination message template. I simply select the placeholder text in the date field and right click and insert a variable called current date time. This message template will now show the current date each time a message is processed. The current date time variable is built in, but you can map your own ones here. From here, you can also find any custom transformers you've created in .NET. You can do all sorts of mapping and formatting with custom transformers, but you'll have to find the details in another video we've got a link to in the comments. I'm now going to remove this additional activity that I don't need. I can just disable it if it was only for a temporary removal. It's worth noting if a workflow is saved with an activity that's not filled out correctly, it will automatically be disabled. Enable it again like this once you have finished the problem. But as I'm not going to need it at all, I'll just delete it. Okay, one last thing before we run this. I want to create a filter so that we now only process ADT messages. Filters can be added to any activity as a form of flow control, but in this case, we want to add it to the receiver. Clicking the filters icon takes us to the filters screen. Here, I will add a filter and adjust the address to MSH 9.1, where the value is equal to ADT. Great. Our workflow is written. Let's save it and then navigate across to the main HL7 soup screen, and we can test this out. We have to start this workflow running first, and we'll do that by clicking the Start Receiving button. And now we can use our sender to start processing some messages. We could send the individual messages by clicking here, but I'm going to click the Play button and let the automatic sender run them through automatically. I'll leave this to do its thing, and we'll go back to the workflow editor and take a look at the logs. I click the refresh button down here to refresh this list, and we can see the messages coming in. Refresh again, and there are more messages. Notice how the filtered ones show as grey, so they're easily identifiable. Each message has an ID plus processing and completed dates. We can also expand the message to see the details of the activities too. Each of the activities are also expandable, so you can view the source message, response message, 
and if we had any errors, they would show and list the details here too. All this is available right in the workflow designer screen to help you build, debug, or troubleshoot your workflows. Okay, so let's take a look at the file we've created. Because it's CSV, it'll load straight into Excel ready for your analysis. Let's go one step further and have HR7Soup sort out the messages into different files. It could be by patient or any other value, but in this sample I'm going to name the file for its event type. All we have to do is edit our receiver again, navigate to our transformers, and create an MSH 9.2 variable by dragging it from the source message into the transformer list. Now we have a variable, just navigate to the file writer and place it in the file path by right clicking and selecting our newly created variable. I'll save this and then send a message through. And look, we have the message type in the file name. Easy. The new features don't stop here. The ability to write custom activities or transformers in .NET is incredibly powerful. You can watch one of our videos here where we will write a custom activity that writes patient information to a database. You will learn how to write the code in C Sharp or Visual Basic .NET, and even how you can step through the code line at a time with Visual Studio in what must be the best debugging environment you'll find for HL7. We hope you have found this tutorial helpful. It barely scratched the surface of what's now possible with HL7 Super version 3, but I hope it gives you an indication of what can be done.